Hi everyone, it's uh, Lance here once again uh, for Best Day Ever MTB and we're still here in uh, shutdown here in New Zealand due to the uh, pandemic. Um, it gets a little bit worse than that actually. Um, had a wee mishap, not on the bike, I've got to point that out, doing a little bit of gardening around the place, trimming some trees, slipped and managed to impale myself on a cut tree stump. Um, and when I say impaled myself, I did it on the groin. Um, ended up in the hospital, I had to have a little bit of surgery. Um, not a very sensible thing to do at the best of the times and during a pandemic a really dumb thing to do so guys just stay safe out there anyway the good news is it does look like i'm still going to be able to race in the men's category this year um, although that was a near run thing um, so what am i going to do i can't ride a bike um, i thought a lot of guys have asked me a lot of questions over the years about my bike my bike the zero tunifar is a very special bike i think and it's an unusual bike having a gearbox and so a lot of people have questions about it so anyway i thought i'd had it for three years now it's had a good life i've taken it to whistler i've taken it to italy it's been to the south island it's really had a real hammering this bike um, so anyway if you want to find out more about the bike and you've got nothing else to do with your afternoon um come and let's have a look okay so let's start with the zero tunifa it's a 160 mil travel uh, enduro bike um, but the big difference about this bike is there's no derailleur on the back of it it has a 12 speed uh, pinion gearbox um, so it is a bit different and people don't really know what to make of it people have said to me am i riding a single speed Am I riding an e-bike? Um, and if you don't believe me that people don't know what this, just watch what these guys thought of it. Oh my goodness me. Oh my. Oh, Look, is no. he, he's Lance, a road to ruin. Lance Eastman with a zero. Wait, what's that? The zero tenawa. Never heard of it. Crankworks. Look at it. It's single speed. Wow. Gearbox. What a bit of kit. It's a gearbox thing. Yeah. Tijuana. Is that oh what is? my! Yeah, it's really nice. That's the first one in the bike vault. It's a super nice. That's just, oh my! This is ridiculous. We've crazy. not had this many. We started too high. You see what I mean about people not knowing quite what to make of this bike. Uh, this is the sort of bike that if you're out riding on the trail, people will come up to you and ask you all sorts of questions. Uh, how does that gearbox work? Is that grip shifter okay? Is it heavy? Um, so if you're the sort of person who doesn't like to be stopped by strangers and ask questions about your bike, don't get one of these. On my, uh, for me, I don't mind. I don't mind talking about bikes, so uh, it's a good thing. Why don't I run you through uh, the bike and the things that I put on it? Um, I decided actually, I think it was uh, 2017, I decided I wanted to get uh, a new bike. You, you know what it's like, you'll want a new bike. Um, and so I went to Crankworks, demoed all the bikes that were available, and then I saw this thing. Didn't get to demo it, didn't even get to ride it, but I just saw it and I fell in love. Um, I'd always liked the idea of a gearbox bike, and so I decided that I was going to get it. Uh, didn't get the thing till the following January 2018, so it was a bit of a wait, but it did give me a chance to decide exactly what I was going to put on it and get all those parts together. So let's run through some of the parts that I put on my bike. Brakes, obviously, we've got uh, XTR trail brakes on this bike. Um, got a good deal off chain reaction, so I went for those. They're maybe a little underdone. You could maybe go for a more powerful brake than that these days, um, but they're easy to service. I can bleed them really easily, change the pads really easy, um, and so, I like them, I like the feel of them as well. Uh, the bars, got Renthal fat bars on there and a 35mm um, stem. Interestingly, this bike is a large. Before this, I'd never owned a large bike. I always thought it was a medium. I'm kind of on that cusp size. Um, in fact, I didn't even get to try a large of this. I just had to take on faith that I should have a large and it was a right decision. In fact, interestingly, since I've been riding a lot of 29ers um, and longer reach bikes, this thing actually, when I jump back on it, because I don't ride it so much these days, actually feels a little bit short, and it almost feels as I wouldn't mind a little bit more reach on the bike. Okay, what else have we got on this bike? Uh, the wheels, I uh, absolutely love these wheels. Um, got these from lightbicycle.com in China. Um, they're carbon. Uh, the decals, the Tunifar decals, um, they're not actually stickers. That's actually painted onto the rim and clear coated over the top, so that's permanent. Um, took a bit of effort uh, emailing them back and forward, trying to get exactly what I wanted. The font and the color is the same as the zero. The only regret I do have is I do wish I'd actually gone for this color here. I think that would have looked really wild. Um, but at the time, I thought it might be a bit over the top, so I didn't go for it. So that's, that's one regret I, I do have. Um, seat. Uh, well, seat post anyway, I've got the KS Lev Integra um, with the Southpaw um, uh, lever. Um, I love uh, the lever's good. 
some of the um, seat posts you get with a little lever on the top. Remember the um, reverb little push button levers and they were horrible to use. So now that we don't have front derailleurs, it's quite natural just to reach there and, and get that lever there. Um, what else have we got on this bike? Uh, on the, I guess, suspension, uh, set of Fox 36s. Um, I like Fox. Uh, these are a nice set of forks. Uh, they do have the um, uh, dial at the front that you can uh, lock it out or put it in trail mode. To be honest, I leave it open all the time, so I don't use that. Uh, the Fox X2 shock on the rear, um, a lovely shock as well. Uh, the bike handles really well with it. This does have a, um, a climb switch on it, and I do use that all the time. If I'm climbing up at Fire Road, um, I quickly notice that, yeah, be, I, haven't, I haven't got the climb switch on, and you put it on, and you notice it's just that bit stiffer and easier to climb up the hill. Right, um, bottle cage, not that exciting, but we've got a small Bonterrage with side-loading bottle cage. There isn't a lot of space in here. Um, you can only get a 500ml bottle, and in fact, the only bottle I can fit in there is Zeroid's own bottle. Um, they can supply a bottle, which is, is good, it's, but it's a little small, I must admit. If you're doing an enduro race or something, I drink a lot of water, and 500ml I run out pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, it would be nice to have a bigger bottle cage, um, but it, it's, it's okay. All right, so I think that is uh, the bike. You're thinking, okay, what about the gearbox? And that's probably the big thing, and we'll come to that, but I think we should at least take it for a ride. So let's go for a quick spin. Um, I'll meet you guys, um, let's say, Whistler, shall we? Well, here we are in Whistler. That's right, uh, me and the Dad's Army boys managed to get to Whistler last year. Um, oh, one nice good thing about the Zero Tunnifar is you just throw it in a box, you don't need to bother about taking the derailleur off. Uh, the Zero uh, Tunnifar is an excellent bike, I think, for, um, for Whistler. Whistler's got all sorts of uh, different terrain. It's got fast bike parks, uh, sort of tracks with jumps. It's got technical roti stuff. We're doing top of the world here. Um, it's got everything that you could want. And it's got stuff outside the park that involves a little bit of climbing as well. Now, when I first got this bike, I actually thought that it was designed so well that you couldn't actually crash it. Um, I rode around with just a whole new level of confidence. Um, my previous bike was a Ibis Mojo HD 26 inch uh, bike. That was a pretty amazing bike in its day as well, but this thing just gave me a whole new level of confidence. Admittedly, um, the whole I'm not, never going to crash thing didn't last, and eventually the bike well, threw yeah. me off, um, and I've been thrown off many times since. Um, but it's still a very confidence inspiring bike, and it's sort of this bike actually developed my love for the uh -huh. steep, techy stuff. Um, I felt really confident on it. Now, one of the things about this bike is that. Um, the uh, rear wheel doesn't have the weight of the cassette, the chain line is always fixed. One thing I do like about it is it's nice and quiet. I hate that chain slap sound. Um, you don't get that on this bike, nice and quiet. And the suspension performance is supposed to work a lot better um, because of that yeah, fixed actually, chain line and without the weight the of the cassette on the rear wheel. Yeah, I'm no so expert, good. I can just tell whether I can ride something or not. And certainly I've always really enjoyed riding this bike um, and certainly enjoyed this trip to, nice. um, uh, to Whistler. Now, if you ever uh, want to climb the thing, as you say, if you know my um, riding style, I hate climbing. I'm riding an e-bike now, um, but I absolutely hate climbing. And this thing, one good thing about it is it does have a really low gear. Um, it's got a 600% range that's uh, bigger than an Eagle cassette. Um, so it's got a wide range of gears. So you don't run out of gears going down the hill either, which often used to be a problem. Um, and you can grind up a hill no matter how steep, really slow. Um, watching these videos uh, does make me a little bit sad, I must admit, thinking where we are in the world at the moment. If you like watching a bit of this footage from A-Line, um, let me know in the comments. I could always put together a bit of a highlights package of the stuff that isn't already in the, the previous videos I've made. Um, anyway, I guess we better get back to New Zealand and uh, back down to lockdown, and anyway, we'll see you back there. Oh, Whistler, eh? It seems so long ago now that we were riding in the bike park in Whistler, um, and now here we are, locked down, sit, riding around our back gardens. Uh, anyway, I should probably point out at this point, because you're thinking like, Lance, is he sponsored by uh, Zeroed? Is this an impartial review? Um, I do have a sort of sponsorship deal with Zeroed. It's not exactly what you call a factory sponsorship. Um, basically, if I want the latest... Uh, Tunnifar or, or the new 29er Catapo, if I pay full retail for it um, and wait till it's available, um, I can have it. So I'm not sure if you call that a factory sponsorship, um, but anyway, if I want one, I can have one. 
Um, you may have look at all the stickers and think, um, am I sponsored by GoPro and Liat? And um, sadly not. I'm still waiting for my sponsorship deal with them to come through. Um, the GoPro uh, sticker sadly covers up a nasty bash mark. Um, tried to ride this bike down the Val de Soli World Cup downhill track the day after the, the race was on. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. But uh, yeah, it, it didn't end so well anyway. And the poor bike got a bit of a bashing of the paint so uh, most of these stickers uh, seem to cover up um, uh, one indiscretion or another. Anyway you, you're thinking Lance the gearbox you haven't mentioned the gearbox everyone wants to know about the gearbox um, so I guess it's time we had a, a had a serious talk about gearboxes. All right so in the belly of this beast is a 12 speed uh, pinion gearbox um, and you change gears with a grip shifter uh, 12 gears evenly spaced and I've upgraded the grip shifter on this bike. Um, it came with a kind of an ugly looking thing with two cables out the front. This is a much tidier alternative, so happy with that. Um, it's interesting, I think, with um, new things. Uh, if People often are very reluctant uh, to look at the positives and look at any negatives they can find in something new. Um, a bit like electric shifting on cassettes now. You know, people go, oh yeah, but it needs a battery, and if the battery goes flat, you can't change. But they don't look at the positives. And likewise with a gearbox, if, if we went back in time and swapped things round, and we'd been riding uh, gearbox bikes for the last 50 years, and suddenly came up, someone came up with the idea of, what happens if we put 12 cassettes on the back wheel and stuck a, a little flimsy shift a thing down the bottom there that could easily get knocked off, um, they would just be laughed at. Um, but we get used to the derailleur and we accept the limitations. Um, I've been riding, um, if you watch my channel, um, an e-bike lately and that does have a 12-speed uh, derailleur cassette on the back. And um, it has a lot of limitations and I must admit, at times I really wish I had my gearbox back. Um, and so you get so used to the gearbox. Now a gearbox takes a while. When I first got this thing, a very first ride, my thumb was flailing around, I was looking for the, the shifter, I couldn't find it. Within a few rides I'd stop doing that. But I reckon it still took me six months until I was super intuitive on the gearbox, so much so that I, I, I liked it more than a derailleur, uh, more than the, the typical shifter. Um, and a lot of people say, well, what about the grip shift is horrible? Well, I, I really like it, actually. Um, you can do things. And some of the things that I really like about a gearbox, say you're coming down a hill or you're about to cross a stream or a log or something, and suddenly you stall. You need to go uphill now in a small gear, but you're in a big gear. Um, now, normally what happens on a derailleur is you try and change down. You, usually it's impossible. You just have to get off and walk. Um, or you hear that horrible crunching sound as you're trying to change gears. Uh, this thing, you can just pause for a small fraction of a second, change five gears in one go, and then pedal away. If five's not enough, change a few more. Um, and away you pedal away. And the, the advantage is that you're actually in that gear. Um, so even though you had to stop pedaling for a, you know, one tenth of a second, when you put the power down, you're in that gear. On a derailleur, when you put the power down and you want to shift up three gears, you just gotta wait, for, listen for that noise, is that crunching sound as it tries to change up three gears under massive load as you're trying to climb a steep bank and you're in the wrong gear. So. Yes, you can change up very, very steep hills. Uh, you can't pedal while doing it. You do have to momentarily pause, but it's only a very momentary pause. And as I say, when you put the power down, um, you're, you're in that gear. Uh, another thing that I really um, like about this bike is I don't like spending money. Um, this thing was expensive when I bought it, um, and I must admit, I, I, it always... I have a hard time parting with the money to buy the thing in the first place. The thing I hate even more is buying new ch chains and cassettes and all the servicing costs that goes along with them. Now this thing, um, I have actually put a new chain on there, a new cassette, um, uh, simply because I was going to Whistler on it and I thought I should upgrade it. Saying that, the chain... Um, uh, the whole drivetrain was nearly three years old. I was still running a three-year-old chain on it. The teeth had all got shark toothed, um, but it still ran absolutely fine. So this thing, you will save money on servicing because you don't need to change the chain and cassette um, because it's a single fixed chain line. Uh, it's not going to need to continually um, get changed. 
as I say, my e-bike, I've only had it not four months now and the drivetrain is nearly completely worn out. Um, I went to put a new chain on it recently and it was already slipping on the cassette, so I'm going to have, have to put a new chain and cassette on it. Um, admittedly, e-bikes have more, more drive through them, but if I had a gearbox on that thing, I don't think I would need to do that. Um, once a year, I just change the oil on this thing. Uh, cost next to nothing. Um, you just tip the bike upside down, tip the oil out, put some more oil in, and uh, as I say, it's in terms of the drivetrain, really low maintenance. And the other thing is if you're riding in the mud and the slop and the wet, um, this thing runs perfectly with a, with a fixed chain line. Um, you, don't, you don't hear all that grinding as you've got all that pumicey rotorua soil going around your cassette. Um, so that's, that's really cool. All right, so I guess you can gather that, um, that I do like this bike, um, and I really do like this bike. Is there anything I don't like about this bike? Um, it is heavier. Um, it's very much a downhill orientated bike. I think it, it's, it's no cross country whip it. Uh, the weight when you're going downhill you don't notice. Interestingly again riding an e-bike it's even heavier still um, and it, it's not really an issue but certainly um, as, a, as a lightweight whip it thing this is, is, is not the lightest bike in the world. Also I think the gearbox there is some degree of resistance in the gearbox so it's not as efficient I think pedaling. Um, Again, if your main focus is really downhill orientated, really not an issue. And I think the other benefits of the suspension performance and the, and the easy shifting uh, makes up for it. But yeah, it's not a lightweight whippet and it's not the most efficient bike, I think, in the world either. Um, the other thing, as I must admit, I've become a huge 29 convert. And I think if I um, had the money, I'd buy myself the Catapo, or the, the, the 29er. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, I really like the bike. Um, hope you find the review helpful. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. I'm going to probably go back to sitting on the couch for a while now. Um, and if you like the video, you know, click on the old logo here and subscribe. Give me a bit of support. Love that one. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.